in the rematch, and Indiana leads 12 to 9. And Bob Knight chagrined after the foul call on Daryl Thomas, a key player, because Thomas is the one man he has in the starting lineup that has the body to compete with the Hawkeyes' physical nature. He's the only player that's uh, square. He's the only player that's a space eater. 12 to 10 in 12 to 9 Indiana leads. We played nearly six minutes of this first half and timeout called by Lorenzen who could not inbound the ball. Tom Davis the Iowa Hawkeye coach talked to his troops with 14 10 remaining in the opening half. Timeout and Lorenzen again will try to inbound it with the Hawkeyes trailing the Hoosiers by three. Indiana playing man to man, but flooding the paint. Boy, lots of contact and no whistle. They let him play in the Big Ten. Moe's one of those Rambo players that I like. Plays hard all the time, and he can shoot. As you'll see now. Well, great pass, and <laughs> Moe puts it in. Does it count? I believe the basket will not count. The foul is on Alford. Pass underneath. Low goes baseline from the weak side. Gets inside position. No basket. Mo inside again to score. Boy, him for 6 4. He's not afraid to throw his weight in there. Well, being from Indiana, he wants to show today all his friends of in Indiana, even though he's going to go to law school in Iowa, wants to be political office someday in Iowa. Mo leading all scores. He has seven. Thomas. 14 to 11. Darrell Thomas with six to lead Indiana. Mo for a three-pointer. Way short. Thomas rebounds for the Hoosier. Thomas again. Lorenzen catches him coming down. But watch him what release. And Al Lorenzen catches him going down. Good call by the refs. So Al Lorenzen with the foul, his first, and Thomas at the line, trying to complete the three-point play and give Indiana a six-point lead. And Thomas already with eight points in this first half. And Bobby's sweat is starting to get higher and higher. I think he's hiding the basketball under there. You know, the other day when we arrived in Bloomington, we met some fellas in the street. They had red sweaters on with white shirts, and they had them rolled up like that. I think he started a style here in Indiana country. I don't think the President's Council on Physical Fitness likes it. Tom Dav Davis, the dapper head man of Iowa. I'm to find out what this is all about. Dr. Tom is doing what he wants to do. He wants to teach, and he believes coaching is teaching. Both men agree to that uh, principle. <laughs> Biggest lead of the game for Indiana. The trick has been so far, they neutralized the boards, and they haven't turned over the ball. Indiana has it. But that's even without Alford taking a shot. Marble takes it to the iron, and he is blocked in a foul on Garrett of Indiana. Other scores today. This is our early game on NBC as the Tigers beat Kentucky for the second time this year. Michigan big over Northwestern in the final. Dale Brown beat the Wildcats twice. At the line, Roy Marble from Flint, Michigan, sophomore. He and Callaway of Indiana were the top two freshmen in the league last year. First point for Marble. 17-13, Indiana's lead with seven minutes gone. Here comes heavy pressure after made field goal to foul shot. Real heavy pressure. Up, they panicked. And it was touched last by Armstrong on the sidelines. Out of bounds to Indiana. Only Hoosiers are unfortunate to get out of that one with the ball. Only after made field goals can you really, or foul shots, can you put maximum pressure on. Now they should break it because you can't put the maximum pressure. The 
trick is to keep the ball away from Marble's area. Any place he is, don't pass the ball. <laughs> nice move by Keith Smart. Alford's first attempt. They know here in Indiana how important Alford's shooting is. So they'll overcheer on everything he makes today. Yeah, his shot was real flat when we watched the game against Minnesota. Bobby Knight wanted a charging foul then. Mohas can't hit it. Rebound to Garrett. Knocked away by Wright. I was going to put pressure on. Mohas is going to make it tough. A tough inbound pass. You've got a seven-footer now covering the ball, being taken in by Callaway. That's seven feet. See the arms in the air? Makes it a tough pass inbound. Very difficult. Very difficult. Very, very, very difficult. Ooh, he threw the ball right into the face of Lojas. Unintentionally goes over to apologize. Well, that's one way to know it's going to bounce back out of bounds. Let's see. He's faking. Tough pass. Ooh. I don't think that might have been unintentional. I don't mean he's trying to hurt him, but he, the count was going down. He tried to play it off his body. Preferably his chest, not his nose. And he, Lojas right back up in uh, Thomas's face. And a foul on Alford of Indiana. Knight's reacting to the foul. He stay in the coach's box. Second on the star guard of the Hoosiers. And already Iowa in the one and one. One of the important statistics in this game is that Iowa on the season has made more free throws than the opponents have taken. And so it is today. They get the early chance in the one and one. Well, I still think the pace is too fast, even though Indiana's winning by six. Again, we go back to Iowa just has too many plays. A 10-man rotation. Not even North Carolina has a 10-man rotation. There's nine. Gamble has his first point of the game. Dr. Tom Davis is up, trying to keep his ball players thinking of the game. Gamble right down the bottom on two, and it's 19 to 15 Indiana. And Alford goes down again. Slow up. What they're doing, Dick? They're trying to break that 10 second line, then attack. Smart. Good move by Keith Smart, and it's 21 to 15. And a turnover to Indiana. Good pass by Armstrong that time. Marble didn't get the handle. He started to make a fake before he had the ball. You must, with your eyes, follow the ball into your hands. Here comes Smart. Boy, he can hurry the ball. Knocked away from behind by Gamble. Out of bounds to Indiana. Good pressure defense is governed by the trailers. Here comes a trailer from the back, and Gamble kicks the ball out. That's why you should dribble the ball in front of your body on breakaways so a trailer can't kick the ball out. There's that seven foot again. There you got a piece of it. Went to Garrett, an outside three-pointer for Alford. Steve Alford is two for two, and Indiana leads by nine. It looks like the drought is over. The rain dance has worked. Inside to Marble in a tough two-pointer in traffic. All athlete that Marble. There he got his hand on it, then he didn't kick it out. Eleven and a half minutes gone. 24-17 Indiana. Inside to Garrett, knocked away right to Callaway, and a foul on Gamble. Holding, I believe, before the shot. Okay, that's the fifth personal foul on Indiana. Already, Iowa is in the one-on-one. -on -one. With a lot of time left, Dick. Eleven minutes and 26 seconds. A foul game favors the Hawkeyes. 11-26 remaining, and Bob Knight's Hoosiers are ahead, but that isn't all good for Indiana. Looks like he's leading the cheer. Chocolate is Scored over 100 points in Iowa City. They out-rebounded the Hoosiers 46-19. to So Bob Knight has said, Keith Smart, you're only 6-1, but I want 10 rebounds out of you today. So far, Smart has answered with three. And he's on a schedule of 12 to 13. 11 minutes and 26 seconds left in the first half. Indiana with the lead and the ball, 24-17. And here's the key man for the Hoosiers offensively, Alford. 
Moe's doing a good job defensively on him. Smart from outside, a three-pointer, and the Hoosiers are hot. Bill Jones back in the game for Iowa. Right the lob, pass the marble. Roy Marble from Gary Wright. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Smart two on one. Has it knocked away from behind by Lorenzen. Wright can't save it for Iowa. Watch this alley oop. Wright passes alley. There goes Marble on baseline. And you're lobbing that ball over a 6'10 Garrett who wasn't in too bad a position. Just a ballerina up there in the sky. Inside to Garrett, the junior college transfer. Won't drop for him, and Roy Marble rebounds for Iowa. Bill Jones all the way around Alford, sets up right for the bucket. Jones showed me something. He's been filling a lot of positions for Iowa. Next year, he'll start. He was a starter last year. Keith Smart. Tip controlled by Wright of Iowa. Here come the Hawkeyes. Three Indiana players are already down court. Jones forces the shot, and the rebound goes to Garrett. That was not a wise choice. There were no Iowa black jerseys down court. All right, they got to get Steve Alford to cut full cuts without the ball. He's making half cuts. Moe's doing a good job on him. Alford for three. Wouldn't drop, and Lorenzen, can he save it? Wright helps him out. 27-21 Indiana, 9-40 left in the half. Bob Knight is Al McGuire's halftime guest. Moe called for charging. The shooter, Moe of Iowa, picks up the foul. His first. Moe gives a head fake to the left on this, you'll notice, and then tries to spin to the right, but the defensive man was right there. Watch. Well, Smart acted it out nicely as well. That's part of the game. Thomas having trouble to get it into Alford, who has three Hawkeyes around him now. They've got a three-on-one break. Couldn't take advantage. Inside to Garrett. The foul no. before the shot is on Lorenzen. And that sends Indiana into the one and one. No basket that time. Make that uh, Ed Porton, number 25, that they call the foul on. Tom Davis, who has coached in the East at Boston College. Lafayette, and then went out west to Stanford after D.C. There for four years on the farm before he migrated to Iowa. Also coached two high schools, one in Illinois and one in Wisconsin. Garrett, who missed that one, made seven in a row down the stretch, six under pressure to help uh, Indiana win on Thursday night against Minnesota. Mo for three. Lorenzen has it knocked away by his teammate Horton and then stolen by Alford. Out of bounds to Indiana. Steve Alford kept the ball alive, ended up going over off Al Lorenzen's knee. 27-21, 9.05 left in the first half. Smart against Armstrong. Uh, no basket before the shot. Armstrong with a foul. We're in the one and one It was a good play by Armstrong, in my opinion, because I don't think there's anyone in the country that can cover Smart in the one and one breakout. How about uh, Kenny Smith or Tommy Amaker? Anyone but those two. <laughs> <laughs> Here is Keith Smart at the line. He and Garrett, junior college All-Americas that were recruited by Knight. It was a breakthrough for Knight who has not gone to the J.C. ranks previously, at least seriously, and now he has two starters out of junior college. Smart went to Garden City in Kansas, and he's averaged nearly 10 points a game here as a junior at Indiana. I hope the fans get a chance to see Smart go up for a rebound when he really goes up straight through the sound barrier. He gets up so high, Dick, that he gets nervous. This is no balloon. He gets nervous coming down. He has, they say, a 45-inch vertical leap. Eight-point Indiana lead. Lorenzen, no foul. And up with it is Cal 
Callaway for Indiana. Tom Davis off the bench to question the official. Odd man-to-man -man defense by Iowa. Nice pick by Thomas that time. Inside to Thomas. It's going up. And the push on Garrett of Indiana. And Dean Garrett has his second. Here's the move inside. You know it's going to go up because of his physical strength every time he gets it down. I did not see the foul. Garrett with a push underneath. Final Georgia Tech, and we'll see the Yellow Jackets tomorrow up at uh, DePaul University against the number three Blue Demons who have lost only one game this year. I think uh, the Blue Demons and Joey Maya have a problem with Georgia Tech because I don't know if they can stop their two forwards, Terrell and Hammond. Lorenzen at the line for Iowa, misses the front end, but Marble with the offensive rebound, and it's Garrett who knocks it out of bounds. It was an incredible statistic at Iowa City. On the offensive end for Iowa, they out-rebounded Indiana 27-2. Bob is very, very upset. He not tell me this, but any school that ever scored 100 points in the best in sports his career. Armstrong and a foul goes against Hillman, who was just in the game. Number 44, Joe Hillman from Glendale, California. He's in there for all 44, Joe Hillman. There he is, uh, also a baseball player in Indiana. Hit 327 as an outfielder last spring. First chance to get on the scoring sheet for B.J. Armstrong, Benjamin Armstrong, Jr. From Brother Rice High School in Detroit. They had those twins there, Dick, and they twins. I remember your halftime feature on them. I uh, wonder how they're doing. So again, a miss on the front end. So Iowa's failure at the free throw line keeps them eight points down. All eight I minutes to go. All I know, those twins are seven foot four now. We'll do a show on them next year by the seniors. Inside, wide open is Garrett. Four points for Dean Garrett. Needle pass from Callaway that time. Armstrong weaving his way. Lojas, a good outside shooter. Mark, it's Horton who's left alone. He can't hit the easy five-footer. And Callaway gives it to Hillman. Iowa very cold, both from the floor and the line. Well, the key thing is they're not turning the ball over. Indiana is not giving them the chippies off turnover. Lohaus bats it away, and a foul on Lohaus for reaching in. Lohaus last year was thinking of giving up basketball. This year he's going to be a first-round draft choice deep, you know, be around the 18th, 19th, 20th team, because he's truly a forward. He's not a center. Well, that's an interesting story. He's played for three coaches at Iowa. He was recruited by Lute Olson, and then, of course, George Raveling there three years. And as a center, he just was un didn't play well, was unhappy. In fact, he was uh, limited in his playing time. And now, with a new coach, he moves to a forward spot and may be a number one draft pick. Out goes Callaway. And in comes Scott, or Steve Isle, number 32. The story right now, Dick, is that Indiana is handling their pressure and neutralizing their board strength. 32-21, that's the Hoosiers' biggest lead. 6.49 to go. Marble fools Lohas with a pass. He can't handle it. Here comes Smart. This turnover, they'll kick the ball out. Loses the ball between his legs. Over to Smart. Now he'll go on his afterburner, but then he'll pull up, let B.J. go by, keep his eye on the rim, and that's it.
with 11 more shots than Iowa in the first half, and they're making them, hitting 50%. Iowa, that's a strange stat, only 8 for 17. In a place where Indiana rarely loses, since they opened Assembly Hall in 71, Indiana's lost here only 26 times. They've won their last 20 in a row. The law pass doesn't work, and Indiana has another. Bobby Knight choosing a three-guard offense here. Hillman staying in and offered his return. That leaves Garrett and Isle on the front line. It's trouble because they go into a zone against three guards. It's almost impossible to play a zone. He should get the shot. Marble out on the point. Smart setting up Garrett. And a whistle foul on whom? On the charging Indiana player, Smart. Not player Person control, they'll go to the other end and shoot it. His second, second Garrett, Holford, and Thomas with two. Looked like they should have stayed on the perimeter looking for the three-shot play. He committed himself too soon to the air. Brad Lowhouse had excellent position. Lowhouse at the line from Glendale, Arizona, Greenway High School there, averaging 11 and a half a game. on the front end. That's three straight. Iowa misses on the front end of one and one. Smart for three. Bohas bats it out to Armstrong. Armstrong chased by Isle. Gary Wright sets up Lojas for an easy two. Gary Wright is a very, very talented player. Steve Vile, ooh, low with a near interception. Back into the zone goes the Hawkeyes. Inside to Garrett. Ooh, tough break. That one cuts all parts of the iron. Lojas, that's a two-pointer, and he misses uh, the front edge of the rim. Hillman, around right, and a foul on Gary Wright. Wright caught his shoulders with his um, ankles that time. <laughs> Wright jumped so high and tried to get out of the way. Personal foul, Iowa, number three, Gary Wright. First foul on Gary Wright. Went to Southern California as a freshman, led the Pac-10 and blocks as a first-year man out there for Stan Morrison. Interestingly, he comes to Iowa and played for Raveling, and Raveling goes back to Southern California as the head coach. Got a guy in the foul line. Joe Hillman. He was a brilliant player in high school out there in California. Averaged 41 points a game as a senior in high school to lead uh, all players in California. 36-23, 4.44 left in the first half. Right against Isle. Garrett comes up with a loose ball. Other than a couple of layoffs, uh, Iowa is colder than the weather. You can't give him that time. That was a two-pointer, 38-23. Armstrong forces one up and a foul against Armstrong for charging. And the Hoosiers are threatening to make this one a blowout. Armstrong gives one of two head and shoulder fakes if he penetrates. Then watch, he does jump into the shot. for Dean Garrett as he goes out. That's seven turnovers for Iowa, three for Indiana. Number 30, Todd Meyer in for the first time for the Hoosiers. In position for turnover. Out of bounds to Indiana. They're playing the ball on a count, five count. They're playing the ball off the body of the Iowa players. 
Again, the answer so far because of the 15-point spread has been the drought ending of Steve and the handling of Iowa's pressure and neutralizing the board. Dayton and a squeaker against your old team, Marquette. 59-57 for the Flyers. Alford gets it to Hillman. Indiana with a 15-point lead. Four minutes left in the first half. Right now, they want to get the ball. Alford again. He's short on that one. Campbell deflected back to Jones. A break for the Hawkeyes. Horton. Marble against three Hoosiers. Doesn't hit anything. Goes out of bounds to Iowa. It appeared that Smart touched it last for Indiana. But that's not the case. 38-23. It's all Indiana. Who has the sight and sound experience you must experience? Who? RCA. With digital command component systems. If you settle for less than RCA, that's exactly what you'll get. Madeline Kahn on having it all. What is this fascination we have with having it all? Haven't you ever wanted it all? Just a tiny bit. Michelob Light has it all. Superb taste in a less filling beer. But is having it all the answer? Is it really so wonderful to be wealthy, glamorous, and have an unbelievable singing voice? Yes! <laughs> Michelob Light, you can have it all. Chevrolet announces one of the biggest values in automotive history. A six-year, 60,000-mile warranty on new 87 passenger cars, plus $1,000 cash back on new Cavaliers, Camaros, and 2.5-liter celebrities. That's cash back on the best protected cars in Chevrolet's history. you see the changes we're making at Howard Johnson. This is Howard Johnson? This is Howard Johnson? This is Howard Johnson? This is Howard Johnson? Tonight on Hunter. Who would want to murder the typical girl next door? A Russian death squad has Hunter on its hit list. I'm involved. Don't move, Sergeant Hunter. Tonight. Oh, Iowa, and you thought this was the team that you would have favored coming into Indiana. Yes. They've scored two points in the last seven minutes. That was that easy uh, chip by Lojas. They are cold. I think, Dick, what's happening, they seem to be reaching rather than jumping. But you've got to give credit to Indiana not turning the ball over to Iowa. Iowa must turn you over. I think it's going to happen eventually, but maybe not. Well, maybe. Iowa could indeed have its run. Three minutes and 27 seconds left in the first half. 46 to 19, the rebounding edge for Iowa in that first game, and Indiana's a plus three today, and that is perhaps the most significant statistic of all. Alford, and there's a rare turnover by Indiana. Their fourth. That's just what they didn't want to happen, and just what the Hawkeyes wanted to happen. Now, if the Hawkeyes can score off this, they'll try to get a run going. Indiana overplaying on defense. They try to cut off those passing lanes. That offense does seem a bit confused today. They've just not been able to get good, clean shots, and that's testimony to that Indiana defense. They're smart making the play out of bounds to Iowa. That was a bad pass by Gamble that time. You're going to pass around the defensive man. You've got to get up to him. Substitution for Iowa, number 54. Lojas returns, Lorenzo out. Watch for a pick down low in this play right here. There you go. He's going up. He's Marble. going up. Can't hit it. Can't hit it. Horton missed the easy tip, and Indiana has it again. Work a little clock off here. 
Two minutes and 40 seconds left in the half. Hillman hits a three-pointer, and it's 41-23. been brilliant at that end of the court. Everything's tough. They won't let him get position down low. Gamble forces a bad shot. Lohas gets the rebound and lays it in. That's two baskets for Iowa in about nine minutes, and both have been on lay-ins by Lohas. Pull up jumper. Alford trickles it in. The crowd is reaching them. This place is bananas. Red bananas. Roy Marble goes out. Mo is back in. Nine to four turnovers. Iowa, nine mistakes, only four for the Hoosiers. Here comes Alford. Armstrong and Alford were in a wrestling match in O-Whistle. And now the foul is on Keith Smart of Indiana for an illegal pick. That was absolutely an illegal pick that time. Keith Smart backed up. Here's we go, a little bit of wrestling, head down. Here's Mo and Alford. Yep. And then Armstrong. Don't let him go. Clipping, holding, 15 yards. <laughs> Smart with three fouls and 13 points. Four of his 10 rebounds will probably be rested the final minute and a half of this first 20 minute period. At the line is the only man who's really been able to score for Iowa, Jeff Moe. He looks for his 10th point. And another miss. That's four front ends of a one and one for Iowa. This is what college basketball is all about. You can never figure it out. They must have missed 10 shippy layups. Wide open is Callaway. And Gamble rebounds for Iowa. This was an Iowa team down by 22 in the second half at Illinois. The jam is by Horton. 43-27. They're down by 22 in the second half at Illinois and won that game. Now they can they can turn the ball over in a run, but they got they're not doing it against Indiana. Indiana will probably go for one shot. There's about two or three seconds difference between the shot clock and the game shot. Three seconds it appears is the difference. Of course, what the Hoosiers would like is Alford to be set up for a final three-point drive. Or keep the ball in Alfred's hands. Alfred, over four years, is shooting over 90% charity on. That's the shot clock in the upper left, game clock lower right. There it is. Alford. Double pumps and hits the three-pointer. and every pass over 30 yards you get 10 points for in football. Bob, I've called you Alexander the Great because of all the uh, accomplishments you had. If you left basketball tomorrow, what would you do? Well, if I left it tomorrow, uh, I'd start working on where I was going to go fishing in June. And uh, I'd think about what I wanted to do this summer and how I wanted to use my time. I've got... Uh, uh, my youngest boy I'd like to work with as a basketball player, work with him. The oldest one I have a lot of fun with because he's kind of business oriented and I'd, I'd spend some time uh, fiddling around with him as, as I have been since he got out of school. Uh, and, and I'd play a lot of golf and, and really wouldn't... All right, but the honeymoon ends. I mean, the fishing gets old, the golf no, gets old. No, it really old. wouldn't. I mean, after a while, fishing's enjoyable because you can't do it all the time. Okay, let me tell you what you'd have a problem with. 
you know, you the talk. show's on you. Now don't get the show know, on me. No, but I'm not going to. But you talk every day. You love to talk, <laughs> and you have never gotten tired of talking. I've known you for 25 years, and you talk and you talk and you talk, and you make a lot of sense. And a lot of what you say doesn't make any sense unless you really pay attention to what the hell you're saying. And you haven't ever gotten tired of talking. Now, I'm not ever going to get tired of fishing. Don't ever think that I got to be as competitive the day I walk out of this as I have been while I've been in it. That's a fallacy that a lot of people have. And I, and I know me better than anybody does. And I know exactly what I can do when I get away from here. And it isn't going to have to be centered around something that's highly competitive like this has been. Well, Bob Knight would argue with this, but when you talk to his friends, he is highly competitive on the golf course, and someone once described him and his intensity that he even fishes hard. <laughs> and he's still upset about the book. Are you surprised by the fact that he's really, he's really angry about it all? Well, I don't know what went on behind closed doors, Dick, but I do know a year ago last October, I came to Bloomington to do a piece on Bobby Knight, and I had dinner that night with John and Bobby. And John says to me, I am spending the next three months here in Bloomington. I'm living here. And I said to John and Bobby, I said, hey, you two guys will never talk again. <laughs> and John Feinstein and Bob Knight may never talk again. Poor Mrs. Front End, one-to-one. -one. Big st stat is 21-19 Indiana, out-rebounding Iowa, and then the turnovers plus six Indiana. They're ready to go in the second half for Iowa, Lojas, Armstrong. Gamble, Marble, and Wright, same team that started. Indiana with Thomas, Garrett, Alford, Callaway, and Smart, same five that started. And the man by Iowa. Had the feeling that uh, Bob Knight's team would be patient on every possession in the second half with that huge lead. Thomas. And the rebound to right. Gamble ahead to Marble. Marble inside. No foul. And Gamble gets the rebound basket. Four points for Gamble. Carrot got a piece of the ball then. It's a big mountain to climb, but Iowa has done it in the past this year. They're a good second half team. They try to weigh you down physically. Ask Illinois. Coach Knight is saying to himself, let's get a basket, let's get off the crowd, let's start right away, pick up the momentum, get the crowd in the game. Alford for three, rebound to Lojas, and Wright loses the ball. Smart, Callaway. Strong with right to the other end, and it's off the foot of Alford. Good play by Alford that time. Saved the basket. Armstrong inside. And the foul is on Marble of Iowa. Second on Roy Marble. Here comes the pressure. Again, the seven-footer. Double Thomas on the baseline makes it very difficult to get in. Look at that wingspan on Lojos. Callaway to Smart, and it's Indiana easily into the offensive end. Get the ball into Alfred's hand. And a foul. Alford goes to the line, and his father, Sam, who coached him in high school at Newcastle, Indiana, in the audience. His son is 15 and a half, and he's a sophomore, 18, and junior, 22.5, this year, 22.2. The leading scorer in Indiana history in past Don Schlunt, the star of the Indiana teams of the early 50s, earlier this week. Has ruled a non-shooting foul, and that is why you heard the moan in the background. He gets the ball down low to Thomas. As cold as Alford has been the last three games, has been Thomas red hot. He's really carried Indiana to three very tough wins. At
at Northwestern at Wisconsin and here against Minnesota Thursday evening. They get the ball into Thomas, which they're trying to do. Eight seconds on the shot clock, and there's Thomas. 11 points for Daryl Thomas. Gamble from outside, hammers one home, and it's 48-31, Indiana. Two and a half minutes gone, second half. There's the lock, watch him throw it off that body. Well, that served as a pass as Thomas with an easy shot on the alley-oop off the board. Armstrong is fouled at the far end. I almost wonder if this was intentional by Alford, that he was trying to pass the ball off the backboard. I think he got hung in the air, but I don't think he was passing. He just put it up there. And obviously, Thomas had the inside position. The foul on Dean Garrett is third. Four years under Bob Knight as a starter, Steve Alford. Four years. Sometimes it seems like 20, and other times it seems like six months, probably. D.J. Armstrong and another miss from the line by Iowa. Hard to believe this is the same team we saw last week on NBC as they beat a tough Illinois team. So much of basketball is in your head. Armstrong rattles in his first point of the game. 17 minutes left. This is an Iowa team that scored 101 against Indiana a month ago. Smart. Keith Smart with 15 points. Foul is against Indiana. I think they call that one against Rick Calloway. Personal foul, Indiana. Al Lorenzen returns to the Iowa lineup for Brad Lojas. Most points ever scored against a Bobby Knight coach team. Before that, it was 92, I think it was by Kentucky. Yes, in that uh, 1975 tournament, Kentucky beat Indiana 92-90. That's a long way from 100 when you think about it. He was very proud of that fact. 22 years of coaching without anyone scoring 100. Knight, longtime defensive wizard. And of course, that's where he made his name at Army when he was the head coach of the cadets. And I almost wonder if they have a big second half if uh, Bob Knight might want to return the favor to Iowa if he has a chance to score 100. Well, when it came to the Big Ten, the Big Ten was a run-and-shoot type conference 16 years ago. They averaged about 85 points a game. And then when Indiana was in its prime national championship, it got down to 61-point average. Here comes Alford for three. He's actually a better shooter from three-point range than overall. And now a foul against Marble of Iowa. Turnover. Three on him. Boy, this league is hard to figure. I mean, uh, I suppose if they called all the contact, no one would have any players left. But you see bodies flying, and then away from the ball, there'll be a subtle call. Well, he tried to throw it off his legs again that time. But he didn't beat the five-second count. And Tom Davis claps at a rare turnover for his Iowa defense. Don't forget, Iowa can get a run going. I doubt it because I think Indiana will start milking that clock as soon as they can. Lorenzen in to right. Bill Jones is back in the lineup. He has the ball for Iowa. We'll see the Hawkeyes against Michigan at Iowa City next Saturday. We have a halftime show on the coach. Tom Davis will be featured at halftime of that game. They're laying off Lorenzen. And away from the ball and foul against Iowa. One ref pointed down for the foul to be on Dean Garrett, and the other ref pointed to the foul on Gary Wright. Well, that's twice Iowa committing a very tough foul. You've got the ball and you lose it. Let's see what Wright did. There he is. Well, you saw 20 move into him. I'm not sure that Wright was guilty. 20 jumped in front of him. When in doubt, stay with the home team. That's right. Rick Calloway gets the job done. 
Tom Davis had a good argument. That's off Alford. Oh, they give that to, to Indiana as well. So maybe we better not say what we think we see. Well, Marble got a hand on it, I think. He's gonna, he's gonna play it out again. Good move by Callaway, give him the release. Nice save by Thomas. 21 point lead for Indiana and Thomas looking for more. Darrell Thomas. 15 points for him. Mo. Doug Mo. Mo, that time he raked Dean Garrett coming from the strong side of the court. Time out here at Bloomington, Indiana, where the number two team in the nation against number four, Iowa, and it's all cream and crimson. This is a consummation devoutly. What makes rich. John Madden mad? You ever lose sleep over a wake-up call? What if your hotel messes up again? What if it rings at 8.30 instead of 6.30? Then you scramble around like a crazy guy trying to make the big meeting. You can blow your whole career. But don't get mad. Get Ramada, where a 6.30 wake-up call rings when it's supposed to. At Ramada, you stay right on schedule. So it's easy to sleep, perchance to dream. Next time, uh, Ramada. Sleep. Call 1-800-2-RAMADA. Behold the Isuzu Pup. The lowest price truck in America. About $6. Buy a pup now and you can get 3.9% financing or 500 pounds of bananas. Why, I saved enough money to buy this island. And all the fish. Penumeli, Kiki Bobo. Hurry, 3.9% financing or $500 rebate offer end soon. <laughs> oh, and Beethoven here neglects to tell us. Doctor of the Indiana Orchestra. Bob Knight, and Knight is moving ever so close to becoming the winningest basketball coach in Big Ten history. The Hall of Famer Piggy Lambert at Purdue with 213. Branch McCracken, I know his wife Mary Jo is watching up in the north of Indiana today. Wish her well, I know she's been battling some problems. And then Knight looking for his 200th win today, so it seems inevitable that he will be the all-time Big Ten winning coach. I hadn't realized he was so close. All done in 16 years. Iowa continuing that full court pressure. Seven thirty-six. Indiana leads. Alford with a beautiful pass to Thomas, and off it goes to Smart. Keith Smart. I believe that was a pass. Seventeen for Smart. Lojas a three-pointer down the bottom of the well. Iowa needs a peck full of those. Very patient. Not panicking. Lojas deflected the ball. And this is Gamble slapped by Thomas, but no whistle. Right wide open, and there's a foul. That one is on Darrell Thomas. Very patient with the ball here. Watch Steve Alba kick the ball out. And this is where Dick thinks again it was a pass. <laughs> How could a shot be that bad from a guy that's hit nothing but net all day? <laughs> and that was Keith Smart skying up in nosebleed country. Now you tell me if one of your players at Marquette had made that shot that was, a, say, a, a Lee or a Tune or something, you wouldn't have said, hey, good pass? Absolutely. Kiss the glass. Jerry Wright misses from the line, but what's new? And the free throw for Wright makes it 59-40. Get the ball to keep Wright. Oops. 
Nice pass to Thomas, but it's off his leg out of bounds in traffic. Bob Knight up off the bench says, to, to, hey, don't let down now. Iowa's a sleeping giant. They're not here by accident. Like China, you don't aggravate China. If they get on their percolator, China will bury you. <laughs> <laughs> I think China spreads it out, alternates their defense. Well, they got a lot of, a lot of court to cover there, I know that. They got a wall also. <laughs> Rojas battling with the Hoosiers, gets the rebound, and for the first time in the game, Iowa, a chance to have a mini run. They've scored the last four. Rojas trying to make a three-pointer. Good rebound underneath, and Marble has it knocked away out of bounds to Iowa. Marble arguing that uh, he was hit on that shot underneath. Dr. Tom not too happy. Tom's working, working hard. 59-42, Indiana leads it with 13 and a half minutes left. Lojas and a foul. Alford, he knew it. That's His the, third. That's the fourth on Indiana. There's five on Iowa. A non-shooting foul. It is ruled, and so Lojas will trigger it in. I like to drop it over the model. No good. Georgia Tech, an upset winner at Duke today, and we'll see Georgia Tech at DePaul tomorrow. DePaul and Las Vegas, the only two teams in the country with only one defeat. Indiana, just two losses. And the foul, which way? Oh, they all looked at each other, and then they called it against Iowa. The fourth on Marble. An angle called by the official. This could be called either way. A very tough call to make. I say the official's right. Marble dropped his shoulder. Now, let's see about another angle. Yeah, let's see if Thomas moves in on him. Yep. <laughs> so it's from the angle. You know? That's why they all look at each other. You could have called it a foul either way. Thirteen minutes left. Smart is short on the three-point try. It goes over the backboard to Iowa. Mo and Horton return to the Hawkeye lineup. And Bob Knight not pleased with the way his team has played the last two or three minutes, but you have to remember this man is a perfectionist. Well, he's, they're not patient enough. That sweat is starting to go up further and further, and the belly's coming out further and further. There she goes. <laughs> Six rebounds for Keith Smart. He was challenged by Bob Knight, saying uh, he wanted him to get ten today. <laughs> Three times they've lost the ball in the second half because of an offensive foul on a pick. Second on him. Earlier today, the Tigers of Dale Brown beating Kentucky. Two big wins for LSU against the Cats this year. Kansas, an upset of St. John's rally. Number 14, Jayhawks. Pittsburgh, the Panthers are growling in the Big East. Michigan easily over Northwestern. We'll see the Wolverines of Bill Frieder next Saturday at Iowa City. And Georgia Tech, a seven-point winner at Duke. And the Yellow Jackets with that great front line and one of the fine defensive guards in the country, Bruce Dalrymple. Thomas misses the free throw, and Garrett over the back on the rebound. Garrett's fourth foul. Number 22. Young man from San Clemente, California, went to San Francisco City College. Steve Isle, a junior college All-America, and Garrett goes out, and Isle replaces him. There was another pretty good transfer from San Francisco City College by the name of O.J. Simpson, went to Southern California. Horton. Finally able to control B.J. Armstrong. Indiana's keeping them off their points of offense, but they can't get it into flow. Three-pointer by Armstrong out there. Thomas with a rebound, and the lead remains at 17. I think you'll see him take quite a few seconds off the shot clock. That shot clock isn't set right. 
Yeah, the shot clock's at 13 seconds. There's no way that could be. No. They missed the switch that time. That thing beats down, they're going to be. The basket is by Callaway, but boy, are they lucky. Bob Knight. <laughs> Can you imagine what would have happened if they hadn't beaten what was a, about a 20 second shot clock? Mo inside, and he is fouled. Indiana doing exactly what Iowa did against the Hoosiers a month ago. They're getting the put-back basket, and here's another. Well, you call this your offensive board. They're constantly hitting the offensive board. The inside position, this becomes a simple put-back by Rick. Smart goes out, and Hilden returns to the Indiana lineup. With Keith Smart out of there, Indiana is more foul or turnover prone. Jeff Moe, his 12th point. The clock's ticking away on you, Jeff. It's 11.42 left. Hawkeye's got to make a move. And a timeout. 11 minutes and 42 seconds remaining. Indiana by 17. The schedule. They'll feel fresh after the big win against Duke, against DePaul, and what a job Joey Meyer's done. He's on the head of the list for the Coach of the Year honors, and isn't that terrific? I know one guy is really happy, Ray Meyer. Washington and Arizona, for those of you coming up next on the West Coast, the second half of our NBC doubleheader. Shaney's in the run, and also is Tom, Dr. Tom Davis for the Coach of the Year. Bob Wade might even get a vote at Maryland. Hasn't he done a great job there? Well, he's an outstanding person. He's done a great job at that high school for about 20 years. Indiana 61, Iowa 44, 11 and a half minutes remain. Last time that Iowa led, the score was in single figures. top free throw shooter Steve Alford will be at the line as that is the one and one young people throughout the country just watch the form the less said about it the better just watch it try to get it into your mind's eye and imitate it one of the leading candidates for the wooden award this year Alford along with Danny Manning of Kansas David Robinson of Navy not a lot of French pastry with this shot. Solid. So the greatest score in Indiana history. Adds two more and has 17 today. And a near steal for Alford. Alford now is the third best score in Big Ten history behind Mike McGee and Rick Mount. Out of bounds to Indiana. Have completely taken Iowa out of the game. Never planned ahead coming in. Indiana's just broke their sink. Nice. Hillman off Alford's feed has seven. That's the Indiana Branch McCracken. The hurrying Hoosiers, they called them then. Bill Jones. Rebound to Lorenzen as bodies fly and Lorenzen hits two. His first two of the game. that ball be fought out and some time taken off. Roy Marble misses the short jumper. Lorenzen, the vanilla gorilla. <laughs> to where they one. come. Run and shoot again. Offer three. Nope. Would have been three if it went in. There's Thomas knocking it out of bounds. Now, either Bobby Knight wants 100 points or I'm wacky here. You would never let your team hurry up and down like that with a big lead. You can only win. You can do no better than win. The score doesn't make that much difference. That was Alford's three-pointer that Knight was reacting to. The numbers are right on the head. No, they're not. They'd have to really uh, build up a 67 with 10 minutes to go. 
Lorenzen setting up Parvel along the baseline. Misses another layup, but a foul on the play against Isle of Indiana. Fourth. Oh, it's on Thomas, and that'll be his fourth. So that's a big whistle. First of all, foul, Indiana. Number Comes with just under 10 minutes left in the game. Now they're going to call it on Isle. All right. That, that'd be a relief for the Indiana fans. First on Isle. Marble has only two points in the game. They've really thrown a blanket around the top score of the Hawkeyes. Just a sophomore. <laughs> Trying to keep the five men down court, then break one. Check that on Marble. He has seven points in the game. I misread my notes. That free throw gave him seven. Half his uh, season total here is the Hoosiers working it inside to Thomas. And the foul, no basket. It's a player control foul on Thomas. His fourth now. Thomas got himself committed too soon to the air. Now Al Lorenzen stepped in. Number 24, Darrell Thomas, his fourth personal. Basket is allowed. Bobby wanted the basket to be good. He knew it was a foul. He just wanted the two. Didn't get it, and it's 67-49 Indiana. He didn't get it. He can get the ball out of his hands before the contact. Lauren, or Lojas, rather, makes it 67-51. 11 for Lojas. He's blocked in there. He's locked. Good release. The numbers are there. Three on two. Callaway is very short. Marble with a rebound. DJ Armstrong, not there. Coleman is for Indiana. So the Hoosiers, little men, have really done a nice job of blocking out and getting their share of rebounds. They don't work the clock this time. I think they're in for verbal lashing. Alford circling through to get in the corner. Use 25 seconds of the clock. Alford deflected by right, but he can't save it. 13 seconds left in the shot clock. Indiana still must play at Purdue, and the Boilermakers are only one loss behind in the Big Ten race. Look at that. At Las Cruces, New Mexico State leading by 12 in the first half. Alford for three. 22 for Steve Alford. Bob Knight doesn't like the three-point play this year. He'll really hate it when Alford graduates. <laughs> It's waiting in the three-point area right now to get it around to him. Oh, and the crowd will really explode if he hits another. Now they're going to chew up some time. Under eight minutes.
Jones into the Iowa lineup. Callaway picks up his third. And uh, Gamble will be at the line. Bree Smith, number 42, 6'7", junior from Tipton, Indiana, is in. That 42 number is familiar. Born in the night era by Scott May and Mike Woodson. Also familiar is that brush haircut, true haircut. Gamble misses the front end of the one and one, and Smith gets the rebound. He used to pay 25 cents for that half cut in. I remember that too. <laughs> My dad said, again, you had one two months ago. <laughs> 640 remaining. The nation's number two team putting on a superlative show here at home against the number four club in the country, Iowa. Darrell Thomas. And a block and control by Lojas. Bill Jones, guilty of palming the ball. That, that wasn't a walk. He, he picked up the ball for palming. Time out, and we'll return to Indiana after these messages from your local station. But set the sterling standard of comfort, while advanced Japanese engineering delivers reliability and exhilarating performance. Sterling, the dream is born. Test drive the new Sterling at your authorized Sterling dealer. Alabama takes on Auburn today at 5 on Wave TV 3. The Big Ten standings and the conference uh, unanimously, I would guess, the toughest in the country this year. Indiana starts at 13-1, and one, but only one loss ahead of Purdue, and they play at Purdue their next game early next week. Iowa came in 10-3 and three looking for a win that would push them back in the fight. Illinois, Ohio State, and Michigan, probably all six of those teams in the NCAA tournament, and they do play hard here. They play physical, but Dick... I'm so proud of you, Doctor. They gave you the award here. You're the prestigious award at the school that you got your doctorate and master's degree from. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It's nice to be part of the, the history. And it's nice they remember a guy that was here almost 30 years ago. <laughs> the Patty Award is what Al's talking about. It's uh, given to those who graduated from the School of Health, Physical Education, Recreation on campus. Seventy to fifty-one. Indiana leading Iowa, 6.22 left. You know, that's going to immediately raise people say, well, you must, that Enberg is rooting for Indiana. Well, did you root for Marquette when you did a game for them? Yeah. <laughs> Don't wait a <laughs> minute. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the people expect, but, you know, yesterday Dick spoke to the student body at lunch. Then at dinner, he gave the uh, gave the lecture to about four or 500 people at another um, gathering. So it was quite a day Friday at Bloomington. And I'll give a lecture at Iowa if they ever ask me. Six minutes left. They want Alfred to shoot every time he gets his hands on the ball. And they and don't want Moe to touch him. Alfred just counted with an elbow that time on Moe. Moe's overplaying him. Ten seconds to go on the shot clock. Alford. It was partially blocked by Lojas. Easy Ed Horton, the sophomore, sets up Marble for the twister. Nine for Roy Marble. Still a 17-point lead for the Hoosiers with 5.20 left. Harold Thomas. 17 on the jam. That was an intentional foul that time. Watch this. They should give him two foul shots. This is a no-no. That push. I wouldn't be surprised if he got two foul shots for it, Dick. In that situation, you should hold the guy rather than pushing him. Let's see what the refs call. Bob Knight wanted the intentional foul. I don't think they're going to get but, uh, one shot. Either. I'd be surprised they didn't give him two. We mentioned how hot Thomas has been in the three very tough wins over the bottom teams in the Big Ten. 
misses that one. But Thomas shooting 63% and 85% from the line in the last three. He's going to take you. There goes Marble. Inside to Gary Wright. Misses the short jumper, and Hillman gets another rebound. Thomas, and a foul. Boy, you talk about black and blue. Watch this break coming down. I think Thomas is going to wait a little bit of a walk here. One, two. Stayed up there, all guts and all strength. Well, when you're 236 pounds, you're, you're really tougher, aren't you? Well, when you get off your feet, you're up about 40 inches in the air there. You're vulnerable. Thomas, he'll make, uh, in the top 15, he'll make some teams this year. He's averaging 16 a game, six rebounds a game. He plays big in the tough moments. 19 for him. This one has not been in doubt since the middle of the first half. Set up a new clock. But you know, Dick, nobody's leaving. <laughs> oh, they're enjoying this, you can be sure. The environment when we arrived on campus after close wins at Northwestern and Wisconsin and then Indiana winning on a free throw in the final seconds against Minnesota. Marble hits a three-pointer. The mood was pensive at best. They felt, hey, we got Purdue and Illinois next, and Iowa's tough. If we lose to Iowa, maybe we don't win the Big Ten, which was thinking of the Indiana fans. They still have a problem winning the Big Ten with Purdue. Two tough games come up in the road. I personally thought that Iowa would beat them today here. Iowa is out of it too far this loss. But they've won 23. They'll be in the tournament, and it's tied already as the winningest team in Iowa history. Thomas over Lojas. And Lojas snares the rebound. Four minutes to go. Jones got away with a foul. No, he didn't. They called it on Jones for charging. Good call that time by Richie Wilder. Young Jones get out of control. At the half, the low balls by 19. Tough place to play if it's down there. What do you call that city, Dick? Las Cruces. Las Cruces. I used to bring my Marquette teams down there. And it's tough to win there. Steve Isle looking for his first point of the game. He's a junior from Hamilton, Ohio. And uh, Hill gets a rebound. He's in for the first time. Kent Hill. Marble pulls up for the jumper. Roy Marble flashing some of his scoring brilliance in the last two trips down court. And he's a good defender as well as he deflects that one out of bounds. And with it, a timeout. Indiana by 16. 346 left. Snake River, Wyoming, and Old Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. The Snake River means fly fishing for lunker cutthroat trout, and Old Milwaukee means a great beer. Cold, crisp Old Milwaukee beer, and smooth, golden Old Milwaukee light. There's nothing like the flavor of a special place, an Old Milwaukee beer. Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee light. Fellas, it just doesn't get any better than this. To rise to meet the challenge. Steady on course, three two zero. To master the most advanced skills. To meet the future with new confidence. Also the deck, surface the ship. Cool rise, I. To break through. Show the world your U.S. Navy. Live the adventure. Call one eight hundred three two seven Navy. Eric, smile! Eric, smile. Eric waved to Daddy. Phooey. Since they got that little RCA camcorder, I get no peace. It's so easy. He takes it everywhere. Dad! Oh, well, I guess someday I'll look back at this and laugh. Finally, a VHS camcorder so small, so simple, it doesn't miss a thing. RCA's new Small Wonder VHS. It just might be the world's easiest from RCA. 
Sunday, the superstars of the National Football League battle it out. The New York Giants, Jim Burt and Harry Carson, go eye to eye with the Broncos, Rulon Jones and Carl Mecklenburg. The best of the NFC take on the best of the AFC. The Dodge Super Teams on NBC Sports World Sunday. A major upset building, what you call them, the Lobos, what you call them? No, they're um, the, the Mexicans. <laughs> the Aggies over the running Rebels. How could the Rebs score only 24 and a half? What a surprising score at halftime. And here is UPI's, the coaches poll, top five going into this week. Las Vegas, Indiana second. Should Las Vegas lose? Is Indiana number one? Number one will be DePaul because they only got one loss. Don't people start calling me about schedules. You have one loss and no one else. Everyone else has two or more. You're number one. And we'll see DePaul tomorrow against Georgia Tech. And there will be a turnover as Isle trying to get it over all those black shirts through it too far. Isles went into Panic City that time. You're better off taking a five count and setting up your defense. Still only the ninth turnover by this hard pressing uh, Iowa defense while well, Iowa has committed 17. Too much hands on Isles that time. He had his hands on BJ's hips. Personal foul, Indiana. Number 30. It's not on Hillman, it's on Steve At the line is BJ Armstrong, the second leading scorer for. Iowa on the year 12 points a game and he's looking for his sixth today. He finished uh, fifth in the Mr. Michigan basketball a couple years ago. Glenn Rice of the Wolverines has won and Marble finished second in that high school year. Young, young looking guy, he's heady, good ball handler and he can shoot. It's both of the charities, and it's 74 to 60. So Indiana's lead is down to 14. Paul Chahal against Hillman. Defensive men had position. Hillman made the right play, trying to get his body's head and shoulders through the double press. But getting it through, both guys went through the Emmy Awards. Watch these two guys fall down from Hillman. Watch the both of them go. <laughs> they work on that every day. <laughs> Hillman could knock those two guys down if he had a sledgehammer. <laughs> Indiana's biggest lead, 23. It's down to 14. Three and a half minutes remain. Remember Illinois, 21 point lead. 20, 22. 22. Kent Hill inside, banks it in, and the lead is to 12. I think a little time out here and readjust that clock. Melt that clock down. Marble with four fouls on Alford. I'd get the, the uh, Keith Swan kick back in. Halloway. Rick Calloway has six. Three-pointer. Calloway rebounds. The emergency leaves. We will try to get Bob Knight on the post game. I mean, I'd say we will try, and it's not if he says no, it's not because he doesn't like us, because I know he likes you, Al, but uh, who says so? Well, he says so. What day is it? <laughs> Now stay tuned on the West Coast. Washington, Arizona is the second game of our NBC doubleheader. We have a timeout with two minutes and 35 seconds remaining. Indiana by 14. The German Autobahn has no speed limit. Once on it, drivers test each other and their cars. But when the weather turns nasty, road gets slick. It's comforting to be in an Audi 5000 Quattro. All-wheel drive and anti-lock braking can make a difference, you know. If it rains where you live, you're ready for an Audi Quattro. Wait till you see the changes we're making at Howard Johnson. This is Howard Johnson? This is Howard Johnson? Yeah, be a click in Howard Johnson. Howard Johnson? If you haven't stayed with us recently, you may be it for a surprise. 
This is Howard Johnson. We're changing our rooms, our furnishings, and there's a new attention to service. This is Howard Johnson. This is Howard Johnson. This is Howard Johnson. I'm Connie Chung. Tonight on NBC Nightly News, the Tower Commission investigating the Iran arms affair today holds an unexpected meeting with Robert McFarlane. Oliver North responds to charges he released secret intelligence information to Iran. And Kansas City Royals manager Dick Hauser is back at the helm for spring training. Those stories and more tonight. Down in the hole of that donut, Bob Knight really chewing out his team. They're ahead by 14, and he was laying out some some law well coach goes against the game not against the opponent two-thirds left they have a 14 point lead and they have the ball i believe so uh, but he still that's his way if you accept anything that's not right it's going to come back and bite you in another game there's no such animal as luck luck is for losers Indiana's ball with 2.35 left in the game. Hoosiers trying to go 23 and 2 on the year. Their only losses at Vanderbilt and at Iowa. Well, the thing that really surprised everybody this year, the two junior college kids, Smart coming in and also Garrett coming in, and both started. Don't forget a big chunk of the second half for Indiana played without Dean Garrett. There's number three, Tar Heels, ahead of Clemson by 12. The Tigers of Clemson have not lost on the road this year. We'll see the finals of the Atlantic Coast Conference number Tournament the line. championship game two weeks from tomorrow from Landover, Maryland. Alford has shot 90% of his free throws for his entire career. It's another. There are the final three in the Big Ten for Indiana. Tough ones at Purdue, at Illinois, and Ohio State. The Buckeyes have proven they can beat anyone any place this year. They got maybe the player of the year in the Big Ten, and Dennis Hobson. He's going to lead the Big Ten in scoring. That's for sure. Touchdown for Lojas. He has 14 and a couple of three-pointers. possession of that ball. Alford loses it. Gamble over Isle. Oh, Hill misses the jam. And a foul on Lojas. Or is it? Yes, Lojas. Callaway will shoot at the other end. Four on him. Personal Tried to do a tough dunk here. Here's the shot by Gamble. And watch the rebound. The guy tried to cuff dunk it there. Played it off the back rim. And here's the foul by Brad Lohas. Iowa with four Big Ten games remaining. Michigan State and Michigan at home, and then at Northwestern and at Wisconsin. Now, I know a lot of folks thinking that Purdue still got a chance to win the Big Ten. If we have a moment, I want to show you the Boilermakers schedule. Callaway looking for his seventh point. Purdue at Illinois before they host Indiana and Ohio State, then go to Michigan State and Michigan, so not an easy trip for the black and gold either. Well, you see the brace on his leg there. That's, uh, he heard it the first game of the year against Montana State. He's an explosive ball player, but this year that knee has held him back. Marble for three, gets it back, tries another three-pointer and hits it. 80 to 68 and Tom Davis calls time as Iowa pulls as close as they have been since halftime. The Florida Everglades and Old Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. The Everglades means airboating, as close as you can get to flying without leaving the ground. And Old Milwaukee means a great beer. Cold, crisp Old Milwaukee beer and smooth, golden Old Milwaukee light. There's nothing like the flavor of a special place in Old Milwaukee beer. Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee light. Hey, guys, it doesn't get any better than this. Sending a letter overnight 
was once a prerogative reserved only for the very rich and the very wasteful. Now, with the UPS Next Day Air letter, everyone can send a letter overnight. At a paltry $8.50, you may think of it as the overnight letter for the very smart and the very frugal. UPS, we run the tightest ship in the shipping business. College basketball is brought to you by Audi. If you want performance and handling in a German luxury sedan, you're ready for an Audi. And by Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee Light, it doesn't get any better than this. Dick Hanberg, Al McGuire, welcome back to Assembly Hall on the campus of Indiana University. Iowa trailing by a dozen with a minute and a half left, so you have to look for the three-point shooters. And there are their more successful men from outside. They don't shoot them as well as Indiana. The Hoosiers are fifth best in the nation on the three-point play. And, of course, that's uh, attributable in a great part to Alford's outstanding long-range shooting. 128 left. Iowa looking for the turnover. Alford breaks out with Hillman. Of course, when he has his hands in the ball, it makes it tough because he's almost an automatic two from the free throw line. And he knows it and will try to keep it. Hillman would be the man to foul just because he doesn't play as much. He's not a bad free throw shooter. Hillman hitting 81%. They've chewed up 25 seconds on the clock. And now Thomas wide open. Darrell Thomas, 21 points. Three-pointer for Marble. 82-71. So an Iowa team calls timeout at halftime. They trailed 46 to 27. And they've all behind by 23 early in this half but have reduced it to 11 but time running out on Tom Davis 48 seconds left here are the other finals today LSU on NBC with a 13 point win against Kentucky Kansas and St. John's two top teams in the country and the Jayhawks on the road with an important win Pittsburgh many feel that's at least a sweet 16 team winning it against UConn Michigan picking on Northwestern. Georgia Tech. Very important ACC win for the Engineers at Duke. And now Georgia Tech on the plane heading for Chicago. Dayton beat Marquette by two. Alabama. Two-point winner at Auburn for the number 11 ranked tie. State of Alabama and of course UNLV at the intermission and about ready to go into the second half in that game trailing New Mexico State by 19 points at the half there it is they have not yet started playing the second half and North Carolina at the half leading Clemson by 12 don't forget following this game on the West Coast it'll be the Huskies and the Wildcats from Tucson so stay with us and for all of the country, we invite you to be along tomorrow at 1 o'clock Eastern Time, 10 o'clock in the West, as DePaul, with only one loss, and maybe, maybe, at least in the eyes of Al McGuire, playing for number one in the nation against Georgia Tech. The final seconds. Armstrong with a turnover. And Iowa pulls within nine. And traveling against Alford. 36 seconds left. And it's 82-73. And Iowa with a gallant comeback late. But they just got themselves too deep into the hole. Armstrong driving. Can't hit the layup. And rebounded by Garrett. All open is uh, Hillman. And he'll pull up with 25. Good job by Indiana to keep the ball moving and finally the foul on Armstrong with 15 seconds remaining. His third. Al McGuire has moved down to courtside. We'll try to 
I'll get a word from Bob Knight at the conclusion of this game. Free Smith, number 42 in, and Steve Alford goes out to a standing ovation. Alford leads with 24 as he adds to his all-time Indiana scoring mark. Michael Reeves. Michael Reeves comes in for replacing B.J. Armstrong. And Rick Calloway is at the line for Indiana looking for his ninth point. The score will be misleading. Indiana back up by 10 as you look at the senior Alford a gold medal winner in the 1984 Olympics just after his freshman year number three all time Big Ten scoring behind McGee and Mount and may catch both of those if they go a distance in the tournament. Marble throws it away and right into the hands of Brian Sloan, but it trickles out of bounds. Brian Sloan, the son of uh, a great player at Evansville, the former coach and player with the Bulls, Jerry Sloan. Inside to Lojas, they leave him alone. They don't want the three-point play with four seconds left. And they don't have to play the ball in. Indiana, this win for Bob Knight may be as big for Indiana as Iowa's win was earlier when they were unbeaten at Iowa City and had at night the only time his team has given up 100 points in his 22 years of coaching. wins for Bob Knight only a dozen behind Piggy Lambert the all time winningest coach in Big Ten history he is with Al McGuire thank you Dick I got coach Knight on Bobby I didn't think you'd win this game captain excuse me captain well obviously it was going to be a tough ball game but we did an interesting thing Al when we were at Iowa City when we got beat we said hey if we can win eight more ball games, we've got a chance to play them back here, and that's what we've really been looking forward to, and I'm really pleased with our kids today. Yeah, two, two. And I thought we'd win. You thought we'd win. I thought you'd lose, Bobby. Well, I thought the pressure would turn you over. You're a little bit smarter than I am in a lot of things, but you blew this one. Bobby, Where why, is my get a sweater? why don't you get a sweater that fits over your big belly? My sweater <laughs> probably has more money in it than your whole outfit has it. <laughs> Back to my buddy Dixie. <laughs> I don't think you win the game with Bob Knight verbally. Even McGuire, well, maybe a standoff at best. Bob Knight with a very important Indiana win. The number two team in the nation convincingly over Iowa 84-75. Tomorrow, NBC Sports brings you more college basketball. Fifth ranked to Paul, once beaten against Georgia Tech. One o'clock Eastern time, then it's NBC Sports World. The Super Teams competition from Hawaii. That'll be, uh, well, you'll see some of the Broncos and the Giants in that one tomorrow on NBC. Those of you in the West Coast, stay tuned for Washington and Arizona. For Al McGuire, Dick Enberg, so long from Indiana. A promotional fee has been paid to NBC by United Airlines. You're not just flying. You're flying the friendly skies. This has been a presentation of NBC Sports. Proud to be the network of the 1988 Summer Olympic Games. In every man's life, there is one woman. One woman who teaches him about love. And you will meet that woman in Flashdance. Sunday. Z-Bart asks, can your new car dealer pass the truth and rust test?